Today, we're putting in a live well. And what we've got to start with is putting in the through hole scoop. Uh, sorry about the lighting today, it's not gonna be so great. I've got the boat pulled inside because Tropical Depression Fred is outside. But this is my 2004 Intrepid 300cc and uh, it does not currently have a live well. I know you're probably thinking, how does a 30 foot center console not have a live well? Well, this was a government owned boat and uh, I'm pretty sure it was just the police interceptor edition. They were not interested in fishing, they were interested in ruining people's day. So uh, what I've got so far is, uh, sorry about the lighting, again, kind of hard to see. Went ahead and drilled my hole for the uh, through hole fitting with an inch and seven eighths hole saw. That is the magic for an inch and a half through hole scoop, which is what uh, all of the directions on the pump box said. It's got a inch and a half intake and a quarter outflow two pumps we're just gonna be hooking up one live well today i'm gonna go ahead and get this installed i'm still waiting on one more piece tracking down all the pieces has been uh awful um but once that comes in i'm gonna set up a nice display so uh everybody can see what we need to uh to do this all right i'll uh check back when we're uh... so you can see here i've already test fitted my through hole fitting but my boat's got some bottom paint so I'm going to sand it and I, I went ahead and masked around it because I really don't want to sand off the uh, bottom paint that's around the outside of my uh, fitting but I'm just going to sand off the bottom paint and this little uh, I don't know what you call it like epoxy gray epoxy layer so that my uh, 4200 can get a good bite. But I put a little masking tape around it because I really don't want to get into any paint that I don't have to remove. So I don't know if you can tell, that's still bottom paint. I'm gonna leave that because that's actually where the little grate is. But this here is the uh, epoxy layer under the bottom paint. And if you can see right here, I'm going all the way through now and that is pure gel coat. So that's what I want my uh, sealant to stick to when we bed in this through hole. Okay, so I'm all done sanding. Um, this is the main part that I was worried about. I mean, that's that can take your boat down. And then I've sanded up here around my screw holes. Um, this fitting comes with two more screw holes down here, but I really don't understand the point of them because you've got a big nut that goes around the threads up here holding it. Um, it makes sense to have them right here because you're going to have the water rushing trying to pull this thing down. So I'm going to put these two on, um, but I'm, I'm not going to put the ones back here. I don't really see the point for that. Um, so I've sanded this all back down to gel coat. We're going to bed that in with some good marine sealant, and then I'm going to kind of rough up the uh, inside of the boat too. So you also want to give it a quick wipe down with uh, some acetone just so that it's nice and clean so that you'll have a nice surface for your uh, sand it and then wipe it down with acetone so you'll have a nice surface for your adhesive to cure to on the top and the bottom so uh, here's the uh, inch and seven eighths hole saw that I used I did a little googling they said inch and seven eighths um, looks like you can see it just fits on there perfect drive it drills the exact right size hole. Um, they didn't have it at Ace or Home Depot. They either had a inch and three quarter or two inch. So I went with, I had to order this on Amazon. It came in about a day. Totally worth it. Drilled the exact right size hole. Uh, what you do is use a, uh, a bit from the inside of the boat to drill your pilot hole. Uh, you can't really see down there right now, but you just drill your pilot hole first with this bit Then put the same bit in your hole saw Just like that and then go from 
once you have your pilot hole drilled from the inside then you go outside and you drill up and um, just go nice and slow that way the teeth don't bind I mean hold the drill wide open but don't push too terribly hard uh, that'll keep the that'll that'll allow the teeth to cut and they won't bind up on you so we've got our uh, through hole installed now with our big nut and our two little uh, bolts with washers and I used quite a bit of uh, 4200 marine sealant on this the reason I use 4200 it doesn't run as much as 5200 and if you ever have to take that thing off to change it um, it's not a total disaster getting it out you'll never get the 5200 back out again all right so there it is from the bottom side um, you can see where the sealant squished out all around the tape we got it on there nice and tight and um, you at least want to do this part right that way if uh, you screw everything else up you can uh, close this when your boat starts sinking and at least stop from sinking we've got the um, through hole installed and it's back there curing I use the fast cure 3m stuff on that I'm going to show you a little bit about what I have my plan is so the idea behind a sea chest is, is that the water comes in through here it floods this box any air is able to escape through the top. This I'll have to put an extension on this and run this above the water line. So any air bubbles will rise to the top. And then instead of a live well pump, you've got actual bilge pumps that are always submerged. Um, so they won't get air locked. They're always submerged. They stay a little bit cooler. And um, <clears throat> they can also flow a lot more water. That's a, that's a 1,500 gallon per hour um, bilge pump. I went ahead and got the two pump box because it really wasn't that much more expensive and by the time I'm going to install this it's just a lot of work so if I ever wanted to hook up another live well uh, I've already got the pump to do it um, and is I can just cap that off um, until I'm, I'm good until I um, decide what I want to do but uh, I'm going to have my um, seacock right here and you're probably wondering why hey why are you going to have it where it comes from. I was originally going to have the seacock right here, uh, but I called Intrepid and says, hey, where where am I supposed to put my seacock? Can you guys give me any advice? They wouldn't give me any advice. All they would do was send me an owner's manual for my year making model. Had it on this side. So I'm not a boat manufacturer. I don't know everything about boats. Um, this is this, the port side. It is the counter rotation. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Who knows? Maybe it doesn't matter at all which side you have it on. But um, in, in the picture in the owner's manual, it has a seacock on this side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have the seacock come out. I'm going to have this uh, 90 degree fitting. Um, come on. gonna have this 90 degree fitting if I can ever get it started there we go uh, come around through here then we're gonna have another 90 then another 90 and uh, then the two Get this pipe here I mean I'm probably gonna cut it shorter but it's gonna connect that right there and then um, that's gonna flood the box and then this is gonna come out come right there and then we're gonna have our inch and a quarter line So now that all my parts are here, this is actually going to go pretty fast. I've just kind of test fitted this right here, my seacock with my, my 90 degree fitting. And uh, I also took some hose. Here's another important thing. Um, inch and a half hose for these is actually a, an eighth of an inch smaller. If you try to get inch and a half hose from Ace or Home Depot, it will, it will be too big for this. You actually have to go to West Marine and pay an extra $2 a foot for marine hose because the standard stuff will slip right off of these. It won't go on tight. Um, but all is not lost. I was able to um, use some of the hose that I bought at Home Depot. My pump box 
is going to sit right here. And uh, it's going to be screwed up against this bulkhead, but then it's also going to rest on this uh, little knee that helps support the transom. And I didn't want the fiberglass of this box and just banging into the fiberglass of the knee. So I cut the tube, I cut about a foot off of it, and I, uh, I slid it right down the middle, and I had to work at it a little bit to get it on there, but uh, I'm just gonna have that to kind of protect the fiberglass of both things. Uh, but now that I've got everything that I need, uh, this should all go pretty fast, and I'm, I'm pretty excited. So I noticed uh, there's a little grease zerk in the package, so you take out this little plug, and then you can screw in the grease zerk, and a standard grease gun will hook to it. So uh, I'm gonna pump a little grease into this. I don't want it to get frozen up. Uh, hopefully I never really have to use this, but the idea behind it is, um, wow, it's really taking a lot of grease. The idea behind it is, if my entire pumping system just goes to crap, um, I can at least turn this off and uh boat won't sink my live bait might die but my boat won't sink so i'm going to try to work this valve a little it is pretty stiff because it's so new It took quite a bit of grease. I don't know how much I'm supposed to pump into it. Usually, you'll start to feel resistance. When it starts to get full, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, all right, well, I put too much. So, you don't have to do it until it's hard, just a couple shots. So, uh, all is fine i just wasted a little grease there's the direction said to actually um close it have it open 10 percent and then you'll be able to see when the grease starts to come out that way um you don't waste a bunch of grease like i did but i'm actually going to take the grease zerk out and go back with just this plug uh, these zerks can get pretty corroded so uh, i'm just going to leave this plug in there and uh, keep the zerk in a nice place. And then if I ever have problems getting into this, uh, getting this valve to operate, I'll try to shoot some more grease into it. But um, anyway, the idea is, goes on, this, on the uh, through hole. That way, um, if you have an emergency, you can at least uh, stop the bleeding. So uh, now I'm gonna thread on my, uh, emergency ball valve and uh, down here I'm using bronze fittings for everything I'm using thick PVC hose and I'm uh, I'm double clamping everything because down here um, if anything pops off gravity is gonna let water fill the bottom of the boat until you go down so Make sure you go above and beyond down here um, because th this is not where you want to cut any corners. Um, now, I know the know-it-all boat people, which if you, if you know everything about boats, you probably aren't watching this video. Um, seacocks are legally supposed to be able to withstand a 500 pound lateral load or something like that so if you bump into it it won't break off but i mean this isn't a yacht i'm not gonna be like walking around down here and have to worry about you know bumping into something um, I'm gonna go get a bigger pair of channel locks. So 
And you'll see once I install the pump box, there's no way you could accidentally bump into this. So this is plenty strong. It's not like I'm still, it's in an engine room where I could trip over it and break it. And most of the time when I'm working on the boat, it's gonna be uh, on the trailer like it is now. But uh, that valve seems to be really smooth. And um, so yeah, our seacock is in. You can close that off. And I would recommend if you do install this and you're leaving the boat somewhere overnight in the water, um, I would open up your bilge and close that off. Um, since I keep my boat on a trailer, I'll probably just always leave it open. But uh, every now and then you might want to just work the valve just so that it doesn't get frozen because heaven forbid you need it one day and it won't close. But um, yeah, uh, so yeah, moving on. So I'm uh, gonna put my 90 in now to go to my pump box. Um, I like using pipe dope over Teflon tape on large fittings. Again, I've never plumbed a uh, live well before, but I do have some experience with fittings like this. And um, this stuff seems to work bigger, better on larger threads. Uh, Teflon tape seems to be good on uh, smaller items. So I'm uh, gonna put that on there. Ooh, nailed it the first try. Uh-oh. It's gotta... It's gotta come around one more time. Hopefully, it'll turn around one more time with minimal effort. Cause it needs to face the other way. Uh-oh. Just want to turn my whole valve. That's not good. All right, folks. I just had to put it in a vise real quick and uh, get the angle I wanted. And then I'm gonna put, now I'm gonna put the whole thing back on. Um, but yep, things don't always go the way you planned. Sometimes you gotta come up with another plan. So we'll put a little more pipe dope on this. this stuff. Alright. So I went ahead and faced my elbow the way that it needed to face. Alright. And that pipe dope will also help um, it'll, it'll harden up. So it looks like that thing's not tight enough, but trust me, it is. Ooh, I can't even turn it. I want to turn it just a little bit more. I want my valve to be parallel with the stringer. There we go. So then... So this hose is giving me a little bit of trouble going on, which is good. I want it to be tight. But we're just gonna warm it up a little bit and see if that'll make it easier to go on. I like using the heat gun over a torch because you don't burn your the product you're trying to work with. And then definitely double clamp all your fittings. Okay, so for my sanity, I went ahead and went inside and the air conditioning in and better light. Again, I got this boat inside because Fred, Tropical Depression Fred is outside. Um, went ahead and plumbed my fittings to the side, went ahead and greased and plumbed my other valve. I figured since you guys saw me do the seacock, you don't really need to see me do the rest of these uh, valves, but there's the valve with the barbed fitting on it that's gonna be going to the, um, the live well above deck. And then here is where the, uh, obviously the intake is gonna be. Like I said, I wanted the seacock to be right here. And I still think it would have been fine. But um, 
I couldn't get a straight answer from Intrepid and the Intrepid owner's manual has it right there. It actually has it a little bit further that way. You're probably wondering why, why I didn't give myself a little bit more room right there. Well, the reason is um, I really want to keep it as far away from the motor as possible. I've got it, I don't know if you can kind of see the motor. I got it where it's just inside of where the motor is and it's a solid four feet in front of it. And this is a stepped hull anyway, so that motor is used to sucking up a little uh, a little aerated water, so that ought not affect it. Alrighty, so uh, gonna get that connection made right there, and I'll show you where I'm at after that. And I'm also gonna get the uh, the box uh, screwed to the side. I've got some uh, some anchors here, and I can kind of feel in there that the look feels like that bulkhead is about an inch deep. And I got just some real coarse thread that'll keep hold it. Again, that's just to kind of hold it from moving. A lot of the weight is going to be supported on this knee right here. So in order for the, I'll try not to blind you. So in order for the air to find its way out of this uh, pump box, it's got to come out of the center hole. So you just need to put a level on it to make sure your box is level. Now the boat's going to be rocking back and forth, of course, so the air would find its way out. But um, you know, it's a good idea to at least start out level so you're not making it any harder. Um, but the whole idea is this is gravity fed and then gravity will feed this box and then the air will naturally come out of this hole. And this box will always be full of water and that's, that bilge pump will pump it out. But if you, if you have air in it, it, it'll mess you up. So I, uh, I marked my holes. I'm gonna use, I got just a little bit of this Marine 4200 left. I'm going to uh, put this in the holes. This is a composite construction boat, but I'm still gonna put this in here just to seal it up. And uh, it'll also help hold the screws. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I now have my um, pipe my flexible PVC coming from our seacock to our intake double clamped. We have both of our bolts on. And that is holding it down. And then it's also supported right there on that knee. So it's supported by the bulkhead and by the little transom knee. So I've tried to keep it professional this whole time. Uh, everything below deck, I've used uh, bronze fittings, uh, double clamped everything, used PVC hose. But um, until I can really figure out where I want the live well to be, I'm about to go Alabama on y'all. Um, this plastic piece here was already here. This this is just looks like a little access hatch, and I could probably buy another one of these if I wanted to. So I just put a, I call it a bulkhead fitting, a through hole in this and i'm gonna have my pipe come up through here and that's gonna sit like that and whenever i hook the live well up that'll be my water supply and then once i kind of have a more permanent solution i can get rid of this and uh buy a new cover to put over it but um that's going to be the plan So there's my tube coming from the outside and that goes up there and right there. And we're gonna hook it to that barb right there and that's gonna be our supply line. All right. Again, we're double clamping it since it's below the water line. I'm going to 
gonna have to get out the heat gun again. walking on all right we're there then we're gonna double clamp it not affect my float switch at all all right this thing is plumbed all I got to do now is uh, just get a little cap for that one for now because uh, if I ever want to hook up a second live well I'm already ready to go I'm not totally in love with where the wires ended up for this thing but uh, I think I can make it work what I did is I just looped it around one of these legs. That's the way I can zip tie it off. And it wouldn't be just down in the bilge. It'd be up just a little bit. So, uh, I've already looped it once. That'll also give me some slack if I ever have to do any work down here. And, uh, gonna go ahead and get this wired up. I'm guessing black is positive and brown is neutral. Brown to the ground, and on this one, I got red and black. All right, YouTube land, I'm gonna have to look that up. Probably almost impossible for y'all to see. But uh, hooking this up now, I'm glad I did a little research. Brown is positive. Brown is not the ground. So just getting these crimped in. And uh, then I'm gonna heat shrink them. So brown goes to red. go oh yeah that's gonna look really good I'm gonna do a little test. All righty, listen up. Here we go. See if you can hear it. That thing is quiet. But it is on. So let's shut this puppy off. Well, that pretty much does it down here with the exception of our uh, vent. Um, but I just, all I gotta do now is just go and get some uh, tubing and uh, hook to that and route a uh, little tube above deck so that the air can get out. 
and uh, I'm gonna route it into this splash well because I have a feeling once that scoop that we installed gets going I don't think it's just gonna be feeding in water I think it's gonna be forcing in water so uh, I'm gonna make sure this is in the splash well because I think not only air is gonna come out of this I think it's gonna start shooting water too because I think once we get running I think this is gonna push water into the box all right now we're just putting the finishing touches on this i'm putting my drain on as you can see i'm outside now that fred is gone uh you got good lighting you guys can finally see all the work we did down here um however you can probably see me dripping sweat so the lighting is better but i'm sweating like a mule um it didn't come with these clamps but i'm a real big fan of these odeker clamps i think that's how you say it you just put that over there put your line on Ugh. slide your clamp over and then you've got to get these little special crimps they're not that expensive and uh, send her home all right that's tight I don't know how much pressure that's gonna be under, so I wanted to put a clamp on it. But what I did was, I went ahead, and instead of continuing to drill holes in the boat, I just routed through this little, uh, this is where you used to put the two-stroke oil. So I'm just gonna use that for now. So now we are now in the water, and our through hole looks fantastic. So now let's open this valve and see what happens. Woo! Look at that. That is cool. She is filling with water. All right, no leaks. Let's hook up our live well. This is the live well I rigged up. It comes from my uh, access point that I installed the other day during Tropical Depression Fred. It comes over here to my bait well tank. And then there's all my plumbing fittings. And then here's where the water comes in. So let's give this a shot. Looks like the live well is filling up. Oop, I already see an issue. Don't want that clamp beating against the fiberglass. Looks like we got a nice little current in there. But that's where we're at. But so far, so good. And then once it gets up to this level here, into the gutter.